guys welcome back to the channel and in this video i will be showing you the entire process of upgrading network switches at work this is to give you guys an idea on how it's typically done in the workplace so if you are interested in this video please keep on watching and without further ado let's get started another disclaimer before we get started with this video is that i'm not the only person that is working on this project it's a big project because we have like 20 plus switches that we are going to upgrade and replace so it's an entire team plus another separate team like the network team that helped us build the configuration file so not everything is my decision i'm mostly just implementing our solution in here and troubleshooting and of course deploying and transitioning from the old switch to the new switch okay so for this video i will be showing you how we do our network switch upgrade project at work and i'm going to be talking about all the steps that we have done from a to z from day one until it gets deployed and tested so i'm going to show you all the steps that we have done and i also want to share with you the reality of how we do it projects at work it's not just configuring and you know racking it's a whole entire process it takes months or sometimes years to complete a project especially if it's replacing equipment or refreshing any old equipment so i've made a list of all the steps that we take and let's get started with the first step okay so i have broken down the process into five major steps and there are sub steps and task under that major steps and the very first one is to define the project scope so this is defining your goals and objectives why you're doing the switch replacement and upgrade in the first place so in our case at work our goal was to replace the older switch models our old switch model is considered end of sale by Cisco and that's why we are replacing it with an entirely different model from Cisco. Also, a part of it is to identify the scope. The project scope is identifying everything that is needed to complete the project like the timeline, the resources, all of the tasks that you have to do. Part of that scope is how many switches we're going to need to upgrade. Are we upgrading all of the older switches? Are we adding more switches to our inventory? So that goes also into planning this, the project scope. Another part of that is to identify the specific requirements for the switch that we are planning to order. So in our case at work, our specific requirements are that it has to be PoE enabled, switches has to be stackable, and it needs to run at least gigabytes of bandwidth. Alright, so the next task under preparation is asset and inventory. So this is where we check and do a thorough assessment of our existing network infrastructure. We take inventory of our current switches and see how many switches we need to replace and also if we need to add more switches. So this is like walking through all of the racks and see what our current infrastructure is, looking into our network diagrams and topology, looking into our asset inventory as well. Also, another thing to note is to identify any compatibility issues with the current devices because we have devices that need to connect to the switch just like IP phones and of course our access points. So we have to make sure that the new switches are compatible with our existing devices because we really don't want to also replace our existing devices if we don't have to. Next step is to check your network design and topology. If you are adding additional switches to your network topology, make sure that you're considering important factors like redundancy, scalability, and also the performance. And then that's how you create a new network diagram. Now that you're finished with planning, the next step would be selecting and purchasing switches. So the switches that you need to choose is the one that meets your requirements and your budget, of course. And budget needs to be approved first before ordering. And you should also consider factors like port density, speed, and management features. And also don't forget to order the necessary accessories such as cables, optics, connectors, and some rack accessories as well. The last step in preparation is preparing the environment. You have to ensure that the physical environment is ready to accommodate the new switches. You have to verify that there is rack space available and it is accessible and you have to plan for proper power distribution and cooling as well. 
Now we can proceed to the next step, which is the configuration planning. But before we get started with the configuration, of course, we're going to unbox the new switches first. And that's always my favorite part whenever we are doing projects. So the first task under configuration planning is to create a config file for the new switches. When you're creating a configuration file, you have to consider the following. VLAN configuration, STP settings and port configuration, management access, and also security features. Next is the fun part, and I also enjoy doing this. This is the initial configuration. This is where we connect the switch console and perform the initial configuration, like the hardware configuration, and then loading the config file that we have created. If you want to know more about configuring switches, I have a separate video about this that you can check out. I will put the link in the description box below. Then after we are done configuring the switch, of course, we are going to do the physical installation next. And that is racking the switch into the server racks and then connecting it to the power and patching in the fiber cables to the router. Okay, so we can now proceed to the fourth step and that is testing and documentation. Of course, after racking the switch, we have to ensure that the switch is functioning. It's accessible via ping, you can SSH into it, the trunk ports are active, and you can see that they are lighting up. And also troubleshoot issues that may arise. Okay, so just an update on the second switch that we have racked. After racking it, I noticed that one of the fiber ports was not lighting up. So we tried troubleshooting it. It was configured correctly with the trunk port configuration. We tried a couple of things so far, like reseeding the cable, flipping the cable, and it still didn't work. Tried reconfiguring it, still didn't work. So there are times that you're going to encounter issues like this is not always going to be smooth when your racket is not always going to work so yeah that's one of the issues that i have encountered so far in the switch project so after you have tested that everything is working and there's no more issues the next step would be documentation make sure that you update the network documentation with the new equipment just like the rack diagrams topology diagrams dns monitoring tools and your spreadsheets okay so the next step would be to transition from the old switch to the new one and i think this is the hardest part of the project because you have to be really careful in planning and scheduling because you don't want to cause an outage or disruption especially with production equipment when you are transitioning so this is moving the cables to the new switch from the old switch so you really have to coordinate with different departments and different people for this and schedule the best time when you can move over the cables okay so now we have reached the fifth and the final step in our network switch project and that is the post deployment so part of the post deployment is user communication. This is where you communicate the changes to users and just letting them know that you are going to be replacing and updating the switch. It's always best practice to give the users a heads up just in case something happens. At least they are aware of the changes and also they can report if they notice any issues. Once all of the equipment are in place, it's also important to do monitoring and maintenance. This is keeping an eye on the switch performance on the first few weeks and establishing a maintenance plan for regular updates and see if the switch, the new switch is working well with the environment. And if the new switches are all set and stable, the last step for post deployment would be deracking and decommissioning the old switches, also cleaning up from the system, like removing it from the DNS, from the firewall and all of your monitoring tools and also doing some cable management for the new switch that you wrecked. Okay, and that's to summarize all of the steps that we have done to do our projects just like this network switch upgrade. So this is everything that you have to do from A to Z. So replacing and upgrading network switches is not just configuring, entering commands and racking it. There's so much more to the entire process from planning until post deployment. And it would typically take months to years to complete everything from planning to post deployment. It also depends on how many switches and equipment you are going to deploy. So I hope that you learned something from this video and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.